It's me, the voice of Christmas past. Oh, no, man. <laughs> From TV8 in Cleveland, Ohio, it's the Big Chuck and Little John Show. What the, oh, oh. Wait, wait. I got you. <laughs> in our movie, kid. This is the kind of weather in Cleveland that you start thinking about cruises, doesn't it? Yeah. Watch this. last year.
Okay, now, let me get this straight. Now, you and your buddy have actually made contact with the space creatures? Okay, now, hold on now. We have a direct hotline set up to the White House in case someone here makes contact with the space people. Hold on. Hello. Yes, sir. Mr. President, this is Captain Wells of the Indiana Highway Patrol, sir. Ah, uh, yes, you found someone who's encountered the space creatures. Oh. Quiet, Billy, this is important. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we have a, a truck driver on the line here who tells us that he and his partner have just had a close encounter with the space creatures, and as you ordered, we called you immediately, sir. Yes. Well, first of all, and most importantly, we must know, are the creatures friendly? Uh, I'll ask him. Uh, are the creatures friendly? Uh, yes, sir. He said they're very friendly. Captain Wells, we must be certain. How does he know they're friendly? Uh, how do you know they're friendly? Our worries are over, sir. They're definitely friendly because the truck driver says they keep wanting to play games with him. What kind of games? What kind of games? Guessing games. Guessing games? I'm so relieved. Yes, sir. Uh, he said they're playing one with him right now. Uh, the creature wants him to guess which hand his partner's in. start fishing yet. Not fishing yet. It took me an hour and a half to cut a hole in that ice. That ice is really hard. Wow. Hey, you don't mind if I borrow that ice slab you just cut, do you? This? Yeah. Oh, sure. Hey, it's heavy. Oh, hey, no problem. I'm just okay. rolling out here. Here you go. Hey, thanks a lot. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Knock off for lunch. Hey! Ah, it's cold. Hey, how are <laughs> how are you and your old lady getting along? Oh, we're still fighting. Still fighting? Yep, worse than ever. Huh. You know, I think she's trying to kill me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Want some coffee? Yeah, thanks. Ah! <laughs> 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 Little John Skip. Remember it as though it were yesterday. Inspector Bush, Constable Smythe, and I were aboard the 720 out of London. The inspector was put on the train in London, instructed by Scotland Yard to find out who murdered Sir Everett Strongheart, the world renowned British movie producer. I remember looking at my timepiece. It was exactly midnight. That's me. My name's Thursday. I'm a constable. <laughs> The inspector was rather nervous, as I remember. He had assembled all the murder suspects into one car. The inspector studied the suspects carefully. Lord Bennington. He could have killed Sir Everett, his motive jealousy. Sir Everett was a superior cricket player, you see. There was Sir Everett's nephew. He could have killed his uncle for his inheritance. It could have been Bruce Strongheart, the famous hair designer. 
Sir Everett once threw him physically off his movie set. Or perhaps the Russian Countess Svetlana. Her political views were opposite those of Sir Everett. Then there was the wealthy American John Rinaldi, who was the only one without an obvious motive to commit the crime. I can still remember the inspector's first words to the suspects. You're probably wondering why I've called you all here. One, at my feet lies the body of Sir Everett. Two, he's dead. Three, he was stabbed to death with a knife from the dining car. And lastly, the murderer is in this car. All of you had an obvious motive for stabbing Sir Everett, all but one, that is, the American. Which made my deduction more difficult. But nonetheless, one of you shall hang for this hideous crime. And that person is you, the American. What? OK, you think you're pretty smart, don't you, Inspector? Sure, I did it. But you'll never Grab kill him. me in. Grab him. Never. OK, you've got me. But I'm glad, glad you're here. I couldn't stand those lousy, boring English movies he made. I'm glad, huh? <laughs> glad I did it. <laughs> Poor chap. But tell me, Inspector, how did you know it was American that committed the crime? Elementary, Lord Bennington. Elementary. <laughs> Come on now. Excuse me, what's that on your feet? Shoes. What else? Socks. Can you spell socks? S-O-C-K-S. You just said, that's what I mean in Spanish. Hey, speaking Spanish is easy. Stand on a chair and see a loose light. see a loose light. No, no. You don't have to stand on a chair. Just visualize it. And you can speak Spanish. Stand on a chair and see a loose light. Sia means chair. Loose means light. Wow! Speaking Spanish is fun! Oh, hey, don't touch that rope. What does that mean in Spanish? <clears throat> Adios, muchachos. <laughs> que sera, sera. <laughs> Vaya con Dios. <laughs> Corinthian <laughs> <weather. laughs> Here is an old Kavasi kid adventure for you. Check it out. Back in the days of the old west, many men tried to define law and order. But the only as one to make it was the cool bossy kid. Here. This is 
pale face. I suppose it's one of those horses that count. This horse not only counts, he can add. He can really add, huh? Yeah. Let me see. Well, give him a problem. OK. How much is two and three? Pale face. Tell him how much is two and three. One more. <laughs> oh, that kid's so dumb. Sometimes he even embarrasses me. And that Kishke ain't too bright either. Well, join us next time. Thank you very much, Mr. Salyer. You are the great hands people. This man has just taken a giant step forward. He has just purchased protection. Now, once again, he has peace of mind, for he knows that behind every policy stands the strength and security every policyholder expects with home state. Yes, you're in great hands with home state, but miss one payment. Old Art Lafredo skit called The Fat Man. And now, Houlihan and Big Chuck proudly present The Fat Man.
Buddy, you see what that guy's doing? He's probably a little wacko. Could be dangerous. If I were you, I'd get out of here. Welcome once again to Looney Legends. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the story of St. George and the Dragon, where in ancient England, the country was being terrorized by an evil fire-breathing dragon. All efforts to slay the beast had failed. To keep the dragon from devouring the townspeople, the king ordered that a sheep be taken to the monster's cave each day. But after a while, they ran out of sheep. The king then ordered that the young maidens of the country be picked by a lottery and offered to the dragon. And, alas, one day, the king's own daughter was chosen to be sacrificed. The king was heartsick, but just as his daughter was about to be devoured by the dragon, a handsome knight rode up and slew the mighty beast. And he stayed in the town and lived happily ever after, and to become known as St. George the Dragon Slayer. Well, little be known to most people, a similar story was taking place in a certain ethnic country at the very same time. This then is today's Looney Legend. <laughs> I hate to do this, princess, but I'm gone. Uh, what's this? What are you supposed to be? <laughs> you see, Princess, there's no one here to help you. Say, what's that jerk doing behind that rock? What? I don't believe it. That guy's eating lunch. Ah, uh, well, I think I'll join him. Huh? Not you again! Jogger. Oh. Hi. Great morning for a jog. Yeah. Mind if I join you? No, not at all. I jog here every morning. I really like this place because it's nice and secluded. There's never anyone here. Yeah, that's why I like it too. Stick up! <laughs>
am your genie. You mean I get three wishes? Yes, but there is a catch. Who do you dislike most on Earth? Ha! No problem. My mother-in-law. For releasing me, you shall be given three wishes. But whatever you wish for shall be given twofold to the person you dislike the most, your mother-in-law. You mean whatever I get, she gets twice as much? That's the dumbest rule I ever heard of. She should never. Look, look, I don't make the rules. I just grant wishes. That really bugs me. She shouldn't get anything. Nor will you then. Back in the lamp I go. OK, OK, come back, come back. That, that's a deal. Your first wish, then. Hmm. I wish for a white limousine with my own driver. So be it. <laughs> wow! And at this very moment, two white limousines and chauffeurs are in your mother-in-law's driveway. What? That woman doesn't deserve a Yugo. She's a devil herself. No, no, no. What is your second wish? Hmm. I would like a million dollars cash. Stand by. Wow! A million bucks in cash! I'm rich! I'm rich! I'm rich! Not to forget, at this very moment, your mother-in-law had two million dollars appear in her living room. Two million dollars? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Why should she get twice as much as me? Rules are rules. What is your third wish? Come on, come on. What is your third wish? Here! I want you to beat me half to death. <laughs> oh, man, gotta hurry. Oh, look at my horoscope says, romance is possible today. Whoopee, why do you read that junk anyway? Oh, no, do you know what your horoscope says? I don't care. It says chances are good that you'll have an auto accident today. That horoscope is crazy. How the heck can I have an auto accident when I ride the rapid transit to work? Halt! <laughs> and then Big Chuck proudly resents... <laughs> the Polish Daredevil! Announcing the return of your son, Gluteus Maximus, from the battlefields of Troy. Father. Claudius, my son. Father, why have you called me here, away from the battlefield and my legions, who are at this very minute engaged in battle? Because, my son, I am dying. Oh, Gluteus, you always were a bad actor. But before I die, I must pass this chalice on to you. 
Heed this warning, Gluteus. You will note that as I drink, I drink from this side. When you drink from this chalice, my son, you must always drink from this side. And when you pass this chalice down to your son, tell him to be sure and drink from this side. Now I can die in peace. Father, I promise I will carry on our family heritage with this chalice. But tell me, why must I always drink from this side? Because, my son, if you drink from that side, you spill it all over yourself. <laughs> Come on, move it, move it, move it! Hey, you guys look like a bunch of wimps. We got Pittsburgh coming in here Sunday. They're gonna murder you guys. <sighs> I gotta get out of this business. Coach, coach, good news. Rucker, don't bother me now. This team couldn't beat the Little Sisters of the Poor, and we got Pittsburgh coming in Sunday. That's the good news, coach. I found the guy who can beat the whole Pittsburgh team by himself. Some scout you are. I hope he's not like that last gutless meatball you brought me. Honest, coach, you're not gonna believe this guy. He's the biggest guy I've ever seen. Everybody's got big guys. Can he play the game? Yes. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. All right. Where is this Goliath you brought in? Right behind you, coach. No! Holy cow, I don't believe it. It's King Kong! Rucker, like I've always said, you're the best scout in the business, and you've outdone yourself this time. What's his name? Bronco Kowalski. Welcome to the Browns, Kowalski. Uh, thanks, coach. Rucker, Bronco Kowalski is going to be the greatest lineman in the history of the NFL. Coach, I know we always make linemen out of our big guys. Listen to this idea. Let's make Kowalski our quarterback. Quarterback? Just think of it. A quarterback so big and strong, no one can stop him. You'll never have to worry about him getting hurt. Hmm, I don't know. He doesn't look very bright. Well, he is sort of slow, but... All he has to do is throw a football. Rucker, you may have something there. Hey, Bronco! Uh, yeah, Coach. Do you think you can pass this? <laughs> yeah, Coach, if I can swallow it, <laughs> I'll pass it. Now, here is that follow-up story to the much-publicized story of the Goodyear blimp crash. As you may recall, the famous blimp Spirit of Akron came down suddenly in a wooded area of Wingfoot Lake as the pilots tried valiantly to fly it back to the blimp hangar in Akron. Well, of course, this was one of the biggest stories of the year, but what you didn't know is that thanks to two of our colleagues here at Channel 8, we have exclusive footage of the crash just seconds after it occurred. Our own Big Chuck and Little John just happened to be shooting a skit for their popular TV show in the very same wooded area at the time the blimp crashed. Here is that exclusive footage. Hey, John, come on, it's over here. Man, did you see that? I can't believe that that huge blimp coming down almost on top of us. Man, I hope no one was hurt. 
Look at the size of that thing. And look over there. I think it's the pilots. Let's go. There they are. Thank goodness it don't look like they're hurt oh. too bad. Hey, here. Let me help you. How did that happen? Do you have any idea what caused the crash? I think it was a helium leak. Yeah, definitely a helium leak. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Just started leaking. She was passing gas like crazy. We were going down, it was really scary. Wow! <laughs> <Put our eyes. laughs> Jane Russell. Whoa. Speaking of the Super Bowl this Sunday, here is a Super, Super Bowl story of our own. Like the sign says, buddy, Super Bowl sold out. Now, wait a minute. I called here yesterday, and you told me there were still some tickets available. That was yesterday, Jack. We sold out last night. Look, man, I drove 500 miles to get here, and I'm going to see the Super Bowl. Well, you're going to see it on television because we're sold out. Hey, hey, come on, man. The game's going to start in 20 minutes. I know. That's why I'm closing the office now. I got to get to my seat. You got a ticket to the game? Hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. Are you kidding? The Super Bowl ticket is like gold today. Bye. Hey, wait a minute. You can't leave me out here alone. I drove day and night to get here. I'm going to see the game. Hey, buddy. I catch you trying to sneak in here again. I'm running you in. Now get out of here. the Super Bowl is underway. What a game this should be. I'm Casey Coleman, along with my colleague Dan Coglin. We're set to bring you each and every exciting play and what should be a good one, Dan. And here's the first play, Casey. It's a handoff to Shadowski. He's at the 40, the 35, the 30. He breaks the tackle at the 30 to the 20. He spins away the 50, the 10. Look at that little monkey run. He's going in for a touchdown. Uh, speaking of touchdowns, Danny, it looks like our Goodyear blimp is about to make one, too. And it, is it my imagination, or does that thing look a little lower than you? Uh, Casey, it sure is. That guy's got the best seat in the house. Yeah, touchdown! Yeah, all right, all right, touchdown! Yeah. <laughs> wow, just think, John. We're about to see our first Super Bowl. Yeah, but I just wish the Browns were playing. Yeah, well, someday. You know, these seats are a lot higher than I thought they'd be. Well, I hope we don't get a nosebleed. Hey! It's all we could afford. Yeah. Ah, but what the heck. You know, you can really see the pass patterns forming from up here. Sure can. You know, but we do have obstructions up here that they don't have in the expensive seats down there. Yeah, and here it comes again. Hey, down in front, get that thing out of here. Come on, we pay good money for these seats. Come on, move it, move it. Right. I'm not going to their tires anymore. I wouldn't either. Get out of here. Come on, we want to watch the game. Yeah. Move it. <laughs> Stash, you're right on time. Hey, don't forget, we have to pick up that new guy in our team, John. Yeah, you'll like John. He's a good bowler. Hey, there's a street right up there. Watch that. That's the curb. Oh, okay. There you go. Hey, John, come on. Hey, you, come on, guys, you, you guys are right on time. I know. Come on, why don't you meet Stash? All come right. On. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Stash, this is John, 172 average. 
John, this is Stash, 175. Hi, Stash. Good to be on the team. Hey, Stash, better slow down. Hey, red light. Hey, Stash, watch it! Hey, what's wrong with him? Hey, 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 <laughs> it's okay. His brother does that all the time. Hey, we're a little early. We'll have time for a couple of practice springs. Ah, good. I'm a little rusty. Uh oh! Uh oh, Stash. Red light. See it? Slow down! Slow! Look out! What the heck? What are you crazy? Whoa! Hey, man, are you crazy? That light was red we just went through. Are you trying to get us killed? Take it easy. His brother does that all the time. Relax! Relax? How can I be re. Oh, no! Stash, look! I don't believe it. Go, Stash. Green light. What are you doing? What the heck is he looking for? His brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move those lost souls down here. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, yeah. Go on. Come, come on, on, come on, come Step on. Step over here. Yeah, hold it up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Bill Walkenschwanz, Cleveland, yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Oh, man. What a rotten... Get in oh, there! Yeah, Get, Get in over there. there! Get over there next to Hitler. Or, come on, come on, keep them coming! What the... What the heck is that? Huh? Wait a minute! Are you kidding me? I don't believe this! This can't be happening! This is impossible! I've been here over 7,000 years and I've, I've never seen anything like this! Well... This can only mean one thing. The Browns must be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Who's there? John's TV service. Come on in. Thank you, nurse. There you go, Mr. Leisure. That shot should do the trick. We have a couple new patients for you to see, Dr. Crazy. Hmm. Who's the patient here having trouble passing gas?
of our movie coming up, and we'll get back right to them after this exciting old Western drama of our own. Crazy. Okay, <coughs> uh -huh. that should just about do it, Mr. Magundi. Now, let's see, it says here that you are from Pakistan, is that right? That is quite correct. And you're visiting this country on a visa? Yes. Uh, tell me, Dr. Crazy, do you suppose my disease is serious? Oh, no, no, no. In fact, it's, it's quite common. Will you rid me of this problem soon? Yes, I am prescribing some powder for it that should take care of it right now. There is nothing to worry about? No. Actually, it's very common, but not at your age. It's what we in this country call diaper rash. <laughs> Tim Conway, here is his acceptance speech for Ernie. Hello. I used to be Tim Conway, and I'm sorry that I couldn't be at the event today, but uh, as you know, I, I had a dental appointment. It was uh, just a cleaning, but it was difficult to move around, and so I couldn't make it. So I'm here in my living room at WJW-TV. This is as close as I could get. I am accepting today, I'm not being inducted in this Hall of Fame, but I'm accepting, I'm, and I'm not upset about it either, that, that's not why I'm here, but I'm accepting, I could have been in this Hall of Fame if everybody had decided that that's, but anyway. I'm accepting for Ernie Anderson. Ernie Anderson can't accept because I think we all know. But Ernie and I were friends for 
way too long. We were together for 37 years, not every minute of our life. We each got married and split there for a while, but we were back together for about 37 years of our life. I never met a man who was more ingenious than Ernie Anderson. He was the most creative man I ever met. He could drink five bottles of beer and four stingers and still stand. An amazing man, an amazing talent. I remember some of the wonderful things that we did at WJW-TV. Uh, Ernie was hired as talent. I was hired as a director. I had never directed. Ernie had little talent. And we lasted for almost two years. Uh, we had a program in the morning where we had guests on. The program was so bad, we couldn't get any guests to come in. So I was the guest on the show each day. And uh, I was also scheduled to back time movies so that they would end at 10 o'clock, and I couldn't figure out how to do that. So uh, we never showed the endings for the first week, and people got annoyed, especially about Citizen Kane. They wanted to see Sled or something. I don't know what the hell that was all about. But uh, we did show the endings on Fridays from then on, and then Ernie decided to do Goulardi, which absolutely exploded along with the frog. Got some mail on that one, incidentally. But he went on to really leave a tremendous name in Cleveland. And he did a lot of wonderful things for Cleveland. Uh, for those of you who were around at the time, some of the wonderful benefits that Ernie did for Cleveland and the surrounding area and people in the surrounding area uh, still have gone kind of unchallenged. Uh, Chuck and Little John took over for him. They're still here. Why? I'll never know. But you people have accepted them. Why? I'll never know. They, uh, they've been on television longer than any running television show in television. They don't know that they're not being shown on television, but they come down and tape every day, thinking that people are watching. Please, let's not reveal this at this moment. Again, thank you for inviting me to accept this. This is way too long, but I don't care. I get very little time to sit in front of a camera, and when I do, I certainly take advantage of it. And perhaps I will come back when I'm inducted in this <coughs> radio television thing. Until then, don't bother me. Ah! <laughs>